Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm excited to show you this one. This cake was made with butter ganache. I am a huge fan of butter ganache. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this chocolate wrap with the butter ganache, how to make the decorations, and also how to make this gossamer lace is what I'm calling it. It's a little different from the other lace that I've made. And I'll explain that in a second. But first, I'm going to show you. That was my chocolate my uh, chocolate butter ganache. I'll put a link in the description below. And I cut my acetate sheets in this shape for this wrap. It's a right angle elongated triangle. I don't know the geometric terms exactly, but I measured how far I wanted it to wrap around the cake and how tall I wanted it. And then I just connected the corners is basically what I did. And I made two of those because it's a two tier. And then to form these, I'm just using some doubled, doubled up, double, double tall um, foam dummies. I just attached them with some hot glue and um, wrapped them with some saran wrap. I put some shortening on the saran wrap to get them to stick to, to the cake dummies. Just set those aside here. And then I just used some chocolate to anchor this to my mat on the back side. Make sure when you're doing a wrap that you're going with the curve of it and they're going to want to roll up on you. So just make sure you're attaching it to your surface. And then I did a thin layer of the chocolate ganache or, or the butter ganache and just wrapped it right around the foam dummy. This is really super simple to do. Make sure that your end there though is not touching the acetate sheet. Otherwise it's going to be hard to get it out of there. Now those will set up pretty quick. I put them in the refrigerator. I'm guessing maybe half an hour is all that took. And now I'm making my decorations for the front. And I'm using that textured roller. It's a clay roller. And I'm also using some, it's just fondant with some um, CMC, some Tylos powder mixed into it so that they dry firm. And just put equal pressure on this roller as you roll it across your product. Remove the excess there. And keep in mind that you want, you don't want it to be super, super thin, but you don't want it to be really thick either. So it's going to thin out as you're rolling that texture across it. Keep that in mind so you're not getting it too thin. And then I just cut out rectangular shapes and I kind of wanted to have the pattern alternate. So some of them I did the long way and some of them I did with the pattern going horizontally. And that's just a clay cutting tool that I like to use. It's a little longer than some of the other clay cutting tools that I have. And I like that because my pieces sometimes are fairly large. Something I want to mention about the chocolate, I don't want to skip over this. If you are more of a chocolatier, I am not. I have had terrible luck with tempering. So that's why I stick with compound chocolates or a butter ganache. They work better for me. But if you want to do a tempered chocolate and you want that nice crunch on that chocolate, you go for it. I wish I had that talent. I unfortunately do not. So that's why these two products work for me, um, especially the butter ganache. Now you can see I'm just putting gentle, even pressure as I'm rolling that. I'll try to remember to put a link for my mat in the description box. Also, I'm not sure. I have a my favorites list in my video descriptions. Uh, it's basically a list of all my favorite things instead of listing them individually. And I'm not sure if the mat is in there. It might be already because I use it all the time. And I like to roll or to place my piece that I want, pieces I want to dry onto foam because the air will go underneath also and dry them more evenly and more quickly. Now, I wanted to add texture. I always want to add texture. So I decided to add it around the bottom and around the top tier. And I simply got this by using the same butter ganache, wrinkling up some foil, stretching it out again, cutting it to the size of the acetate that I have there. It's a just... Um, an elongated triangle, really. Just tall enough to wrap, you can see it there, to wrap it around and get another level of abstractness to this very asymmetrical abstract cake. And then I'm just cutting off the extra of the foil. You would not want this to sit. I didn't let it sit long enough before I cut this off. It would be a little easier if you let it set for a minute. This ganache does set up fairly for, uh, quickly, but it does give you a little bit of play time. And that's another thing I like about it. And then I just put some some saran wrap around my my cut my uh, what do you call this my cake ring 
with some saran wrap so that it would dry around that. And you'll see later that it actually didn't dry right. It, as it dried, I should have placed it on the inside. As it dried, it kind of fanned out on the edges, made it a little whiter, but I'll, I'll show you how I fixed that. And this is for the top tier. And this butter ganache also, all you have to do is remelt it. You don't have to retemper. You don't have to do any of that. You just remelt it again. Just make sure that you're not melting it too fast. Do like 30 second increments. Because you don't, I've never scorched it. I've never had that problem. So I don't know if it's actually a problem for people. But just play it safe and just do it in shorter, shorter time, time sections there. And then just lifted it on to my already crumb coated uh, layered up cake. And that has just buttercream on it. You could do a layer of ganache on that if you want to. But honestly, I'm reusing this one since it's not for an order. So um, I already had them buttercreamed. On this one, I did just pour the chocolate over because I just wanted a smooth finish on this tier. I didn't want texture all over. I kind of wanted it on the top and in the bottom just as an accent. And I would let this chocolate get to about 90 degrees. Let it come down in temperature a little bit before you try to smooth, you try to pour it on so it doesn't just run right off. And then I'm just smoothing it down. That's a super simple way to coat your cakes. And you can see that it was a little bit um, ashy look to it. But as I worked with it and sprayed water on it to smooth it, it all kind of came together. And now I'm making, okay, this is the same recipe as the edible lace. The, um... The crinoline, the edible crinoline, I will link that in the description also. It's exactly the same recipe. What I found um, on accident, last time I made this, I haven't posted that picture yet. That's the color I'm using. It's plum by satin ice. Um, you add your color in there. I accidentally, my stovetop, my little range thing, was not hot enough. It had turned itself off. And what happened when I did this for another cake I haven't posted yet, I was making that, that lace. And I found that since the temperature was low, if you cook this lower and slower, you don't get that lacy look so much. It's more like a um, like a gossamer fabric. It's kind of lacy, but not. It's more shiny than anything. And I thought that's really pretty too. A little bit different look with the same product. You can kind of see it starting to shine up there. And keep your, your temperature fairly low. Otherwise, it's going to crack too much on you. And look at all that shine. I really like that. So we're going to use that one that this time, just to change it up a little bit. And now that our pieces are dry, our accent pieces, I'm just mixing luster dust, gold luster dust. I like that TM, um, Truly Mad Plastics the best, but I can't really find a link on Amazon. You can buy them directly from the factory, the company. That is my absolute favorite. I just mix it with some Everclear. And it is so shiny. And I just airbrush it on there. You need to make sure that you, if you're airbrushing um, a luster dust with, with um, Everclear, that it's thin enough that it's not going to plug up your airbrush so much. And if it does, just put your finger over the tip of the airbrush and push the valve. And it'll kind of push it out the, the top. And it kind of helps clean it off there. And then I removed the foil from the cake after it had firmed up. And just cut that top level. A lot of times I leave texture on the top, but there's enough going on on this design. I didn't want, I wanted it to be smooth on the top. And I'm just using my metal scraper. I find metal scrapers for me work the best on leveling out chocolate, on getting a good, a good uh, finish on it. And clean off your board on the bottom and I set it aside and we're gonna go ahead and assemble the cake. I'm just using three boba straws cut to the same height and then put a little bit of ganache on top of those. Lift your cake on top of there, and it's nice and level. Um, you can put a skewer through the entire thing to keep it more stable since it is an extra tall cake. And look how easy this all comes together. I mean, seriously, guys, it's not tempered chocolate, but it still has shine to it. And then I'm just lifting them up very carefully and placing them on and deciding as I go here exactly how I want them to line up. And I was very happy with the way it, it came together. It wasn't exactly the same placement on top and bottom, but it really flowed. And there you can see it did fan out. I don't know why. Probably something to do with just the chocolate tightening up as it cooled. So I'm just using a heat gun 
to kind of soften the chocolate. Be very careful when you do this. You don't want it to melt too much. You just want it to be bendable without being breakable. And that's how I did that. And it also added um, any chocolate that melted too much went down to the bottom there and anchored it to the board, which, yeah, extra bonus there. And then I'm just removing that foil again and cleaning off the board. Make sure you get all that foil off there as much as you can. Well, not as much as you can, completely, because you want it to be edible. <laughs> and then I'm using the same plum. This is not a huge difference here. The same plum color with the Everclear to airbrush onto the chocolate. I didn't want it brown. I wanted it a deep burgundy plum color. So the base color of the chocolate is great. Um, in person, you can see this plum color a little bit more. It's really hard to tell that it added any color, but it added a little bit of that purple undertone. And I was happy with that. And then I'm just attaching the decorations with some more melted butter grenache. You just have to hold it for a second and it sets up pretty quickly, especially since every, every cake I work with is chilled at this point. It's um, going to firm up that ganache even quicker, but be careful you're not pushing on that wrap too much because, you know, it is fragile. It is breakable. So gingerly would be the word, apply your decorations. Just kind of whatever pattern strikes your fancy. I didn't have this completely plotted out. Uh, a lot of times I go into these cakes kind of with a general idea. Um, and I figure it out as I go. Since it's not for an order, it can be whatever I want it to be. And that's kind of nice. That's some of the, the bonus of doing this, the uh, videos instead of orders. And then I'm just placing those in to the different cre crevices between the different layers. You could add some ganache in there, pipe it in there and anchor them to that. I did use a little bit of the ganache on the side to hold the pieces up when needed. And here's our final product. I think it turned out really cool. I'm, as you know, if you know me, love the asymmetrical abstract designs. And I think this one came together very well. I'm very pleased with it. And I hope you liked it too. Um, I'm trying to come up with some new ideas. So if you guys have some things that you would like me to try, go ahead and leave me a message in the comment section. I will do my very best to accommodate. And let me know if you give something like this a try and send me pictures on Instagram. I would love to see what you come up with. And we'll catch you on the next one. Oh, 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 oh,